Look what just arrived. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of goodies. The Meraki Terra. All right. Literally just released a Bouchel Design. By the way, Bouchel Design, thank you for sending me an evaluation copy of this. I greatly appreciate it. And uh, the Meraki Terra with all the goodies. I mean, there are so many, so many extras. Ooh, man. You got, you got a literal mountain of extras in here. I know that 90% of you just want to see the card. So let's do that first. And then let's come back and look at the the sheer mountain of uh, other goodies that we have here. Now, this was on Kickstarter. And man, this is well wrapped. Look at this. That is nice. That is nice indeed. Open it up. It's like Christmas over here. It feels like Christmas. Oh my, that's attractive. Oh my, that is attractive. That is an attractive box. Okay, you just have to sort of see the glint the uh, reflections of this. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but it is highly reflective and beautiful. Anyway, the Meraki Tarot. Um, yeah, rooted in the magic, nature, and inspire the creative and passionate energy with each of us. All rights reserved, etc., etc. Ooh, nice. Look at that. Look at that hard box action as it sort of falls out. Okay, I have to have pull it out. Anyway, there's the inside of the box. And uh, thank you. Thank you for all that. For all your loving, um, what is it? Oh, your loving support, bringing life the Meraki Tarot. And uh, it is shrink wrapped. Oh, Jesus, that's nice. That is, that, that caught me off guard. Uh, the card stock is similar to the, um, uh, to the uh, Dark Mansion. I'm not saying it's the same. It has that similar feel to it. I anyway, I, I think this is going to be the back of the, of the card. So, I mean, go ahead and... Uh, and uh, that, that's going to be your back of the cards, most likely. Let's take a look at the cards. And then again, we're going to come back and check out the extra goodies contained within here. Because this is a hell of an attractive deck of cards. I haven't even opened it yet. Here's that first card just sort of took me off guard a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but that is the... Oh, they stick pretty bad. They stick pretty bad. Uh, yeah, you got to kind of break these in a little bit. Uh, again, it feels like the Dark Mansion Terra. Look at... Oh, look at that. Look at the sun. Look at that matte black. Look at the matte. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. These feel fantastic in the hand. All right. Let's do card quality. Comes about to here. I'm assuming it feels like 330, 350. Um, it definitely has a uh, definitely has a a cover on it or a coating on it. Anyway, that is that is an extremely attractive just intro card. Uh, anyway, let's look at the fool. Wow, um, this the deck is kind of taking me off guard here a little bit. I, 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 I did not know it was going to look this good, but that looks amazing. And we have the Magician uh, again with a Lemuscape. It looks really cool. The, um, I don't know, what is this? Oh, what is that? The High Priestess, obviously, with the pillars and whatnot. Very cool. Uh, obviously, a non-traditional deck. I like the eye. I like the into. Ooh, I love the Empress. That is extremely cool looking. That is very vibrant and pretty. And the Emperor. Again, more sort of a stag with the longer horns and the crown. Very, very attractive. Ooh, I love the astrology on it, too. We got the astrology, right? We got the ram. We got the Aries ram. We got the Taurus bull on the Hierophant. So a lot of good stuff here. Is this in focus? This needs to be like crisp, clean focus. And that is crisp, clean focus right there. There. Ooh, that's nice. That is nice indeed. Oh, they separate great. Like you just barely pull and it separates from the next card. So don't be worried about the about the sort of the the stickiness or the uh, friction that we saw before. They separate very well. Anyway, we have the lovers. We will do a shuffle at the end. Again, you just barely pull and you get one card. So it has what you need in that. We got the chariot. Very, very cool indeed. Then we have the, oh, well, I said, okay. And then we have strength. That's interesting. A lot of lemon skates in here. That's interesting. A lot of little things like the heart, whatnot. But uh, it is good that they also have the astrology symbols in there. Kind of curious if they have it in the minor. Spoiler alert. Let's go to a minor and see. The two of cups. Mm, I don't see it. I guess we just get the astrology stuff in the majors but sure why not 
Anyway, we have the hermit, the old Virgo. The old Virgo himself, the hermit. Like, what can you expect from an old Virgo except being alone, being a hermit, and the beautiful, wonderful wheel of fortune? Mm, that's nice looking. We have justice. And then we have the hanged man. Very interesting. So it's a minimalist deck, and yet so cool at the same time. Then we have death. It's interesting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of death, right? The rebirth, death being the butterfly coming out of the cocoon and whatnot. I don't know if that's the cocoon, or if that's a light, or if that's a balloon. I'm not really sure what that is. But a lot of, you know, a lot of people will go for the cocoon reference when you get to death. Anyway, temperance. Again, very pretty. And the devil himself. A little bit of a bat. Ooh, have I seen the devil be a bat before? I'm not really sure. I'm not sure what's going on. Oh, obviously, this is aimed towards the dove, but what is that? What is that object there? Is that another bird that's flying in the background and is sort of uh, interfering or whatnot? But anyway, but you do have the bat. You do have beasts in the devil. And then we have the tower. What's going on with the tower? It looks like an, is that, that's not an igloo. I don't know what that is. You have something interesting there. You have shards down here representing the danger of falling across it. Oh, that's the base of the tower. Sorry. Um, so the tower is sort of see-through, a bit of a translucent tower. We have the star. Mm, that's pretty. That is very vibrant and very, very attractive. And then the moon, again, very pretty indeed. The pillars are missing, but the moon is hanging stars across it. I do like the different colors of the, I don't know, what a crystal at the bottom left. Always sort of interesting to see that. Then we have the sun, sort of hands outreach. We have maybe pendulums that are hanging in there as well. And then judgment, again, with the hands reaching up. We have the rebirth, the reincarnation, again, with the different colors on here. Maybe the book covers that. Maybe there are different colors for a reason. Um, I'm kind of interested to see that. Well, look at the book when we get that. Again, we're going through the cards first because 99% of you will just want to see the cards. So the universe, wow, that's so pretty. That's so, so vibrant. Um, Ace of Wands, again, very, very attractive. I love the sort of the minimalist type of thing. There's, a, there's a, almost an ethereal feel to the background clouds, to the background themselves. And then you have a little bit of sharp edges for the foreground, which artistically is what you're supposed to do. But it just works so well. It's just so soft. Like, you know what I mean? The, the deck feels soft. It feels like it's a very sort of um, relaxed, soft, and um, just a good feel to it. Anyway, we got the three of wands, which is interesting. Sort of looking out, getting perspective, looking out, making plans. You have four of wands, the home. We have all the butterflies coming back, possibly from death, maybe. All of these were or have a new chance in death. We're coming out of the cocoon. And then the five ones, the conflict. I love the hopping and whatnot. Again, the, the nice use of blurring. And then you have this crisp edge with the six of wands, right? You have the six of wands. We are here. We are successful. Everyone's celebrating. We have the ribbons. And again, this crisp edge on a, a sort of a bokeh, a little bit of a bokeh background. Seven of Wands being defensive. Uh, is that a badger being defensive as home? Maybe. Not really sure what the representation is that. And then umbrellas. I love it. I love it. Have I ever seen umbrellas in the Eight of Wands before? Have you? Ugh, I can't think of umbrellas in the Eight of Wands before. I'm, I'm not going to go for the cliche Mary Poppins feel. I'm not going to do it, I promise. But still, very, very cool. Um, nine. Interesting. Wounded warrior sort of surrounded by the maybe sharp edges of the brush. Not sure. Ten. Oh, okay. Sort of carrying everything on the horns. Carrying everything on the horns. We have the page. Um, not sure what's happening here. I guess sort of carrying 
maybe bringing things back to make a nest or bringing things back to make a gift. I mean, it looks like a bow, right? It looks like a bow, like they're bringing in a gift. The Knight of Wands, it could be to build a home, right? A bird bring in twigs and sticks to build a home. Knight with the rapid movement, the fiery action of the fox. Queen with a little bit more of a relaxed fox with a, with a crown and whatnot. And then the king. That's so cute. So I, I don't know if they're all foxes, but that's a cute little representation of the wands. I got to say, again, with a beautiful bow, bow cut, the nice sort of pastel feel. It really feels like the background was done in pastels, um, or at least a pastel filter or a blur filter, and then the foreground just nice and sharp. It's got that nice bokeh feel to it. Ace of Cups, there is the fish, and the Two of Cups, a lot of this, a lot of fish coming out of the cups. I did it in the Tasty Tarot. We have this in other tarot decks as well. So good, good feel to that, right? Meeting in... A, a common ground, but not common ground. In other words, it's still water, but it's it's different cups. Anyway, the th and the ethereal weirdness of obviously that cup cannot fit the fish in it. So a lot of good things here. Three of cups with celebration. I'm like carrying the ribbon and whatnot with that. Four of cups. What the hell's going on here? Very cool. Is that sort of a, ew, a little bit of a tree of life with some things hanging from it? Not really sure, but it has rain too, which is interesting. I can't remember seeing rain in a lot of Four of Cups. I know it does need a a bit of a, a, a temper, you know, sort of temper down the mood a little bit. Rain will do it. A lot of things going on here. Again, we need to see the book. Five of Cups, the Lord of Disappointment with a disappointing look here with that turtle sort of just hidden in their shell not really accepting what's going on six of cups wow that's vibrant and pretty so so pretty and the seven of cups as well man love love the use of just this cloud effect in some of these you know you have like the purple clouds and whatnot and the eight Sort of a disappointing, leaving, abandoning things. Nine, very pretty indeed. It's such a pretty deck. Pretty, pretty, pretty deck. The ten, ooh, they're so happy, so wonderful. I love the the use of birds and fish. It just works. It just works. We have celebratory fish there, and then we have the birds again, different types and whatnot, all sort of in, under the rainbow and under the cloud effects that we have. Page of cups. The fish in the cup, pretty traditional, right? We have the fish coming out of the cup, like the minnows, right? We have a rebirth or reincarnation of its own. I mean, it's not exactly going to be the same thing, but we do have that feeling of the reincarnation, the new chances that we have with the page. Night, we have the, I'm not sure, is that a bird in the cup? I'm not sure what's going on there, but very cool. And the queen, um, again, with the fish, the larger fish, the symbology around it. I like sort of the crescent moon with the star within the crescent. And then we have the king. Very, very, very attractive indeed. All right. Let's look at the rest of these. Man, I'm just so excited. I'm excited to look at all the extras. There's a, there was a, a mountain of extras. Ace of Swords. Love it. Penetrating Kether in the crown. And going through the butterflies, again, such a, such a muted, soft feel to it. And the Two of Swords. Um, I love this. I love this. Reminds me of the Tarot of the Oppositions, right? Where you do have things going on beneath and above. And obviously, the, the cliche, as above, so below as well. But I think they did a good job with that. The Three of Swords with the Heartbreak. Sort of penetrating one heart and then going after two more. A lot of good things the intuition could key off of on that, right? A lot of nice things there. And the four of swords, the delay, the resting that we have. So we have the sword sort of placed in unusual position. I love the um, the the highlight, sort of the specular highlight that we have coming down here, right? Sort of brings your focus into that area. Love it. And the same similar thing here with the five. The Lord of Defeat. Um, the six, the journey on the boat. with Nobody in it, but it does have a bow on it as well. Again, this could be a journey with a gift 
a lot of things that your intuition could pick up and run with. That, that's what you need in a deck is little things that you can see that most people may not see, right? Because there are shadows in here. Is this something in the boat? You do have the, the bow. You have a pattern here, almost forming maybe a nine, right? Uh, so many little things that are included in here that you can just pick your intuition up and run with. And that's what you need in a deck. It doesn't hit you in the face. It's not so prominent, but little subtle little things that you can key off of. Seven, again, that's so pretty. And the eight, wow, that's wild. A lot of times you'll see webbing in the eight of swords because it is restrictions. But this is interesting because you do have a predator, right? You do have a predator and you have somebody caught. So not only restrictions, but you're adding an element of danger. I mean, the most of the times the card does have her hands tied behind her back, okay? And there, but there's no, there's no pending danger. There's nothing lurking. And in this one, there is. So again, you can come back, use this for your intuition. And you can also say like, what is trapped back here too? This may not be the first trap. This may not be the first thing as well. And, and there are restrictions, not only in getting out element of danger, but the wings are spread. In other words, we're trying to get out of the restrictions. Again, those, those little key points, you need those. You need those in a good reading deck. This looks like a reading deck. It looks like a deck you're going to put down on the table and you're just going to go just hog wild. You're going to go hog wild with it. You're going to say, hey, that bird there is this and I think it means that, etc. Ten of Swords, the conclusion to it, sort of there. We have, I guess, penetrated a lot of different feathers. It looks like there is a dead bird beneath it. And then we have another bird up here. Maybe uh, uh, his friend escaped or something. I don't know. We have the page, a hot air balloon. Love it. With letters coming out. There are messages. Messages page brings in messages. We have literal messages being dropped across here. This could be a message for the masses. This could be a message that affects more than one person. Knot of swords with, uh, I don't know if the butterfly is penetrated or not. It's interesting to see if it is. The queen and the king. All right, so many butterflies. If you're a big butterfly fan, this is going to be your deck. Uh, bottom line, ace of pentacles. Here we go with some crystals hanging. Again, are they, do the colors represent anything? Are they pendulums, right? The two of pentacles. Again, this seems to be crystals instead of pentacles. That's fine. And then we have the three of pentacles working on it. A little bit of creativity little creative feel to that. And then, oh my, that caught me off guard. That's so pretty. That caught me off guard. That is, that is mighty attractive. <laughs> that is mighty attractive. That, that literally, like, look at it. That, that literally caught me off guard a little bit. Same with the five. So pretty. They kept the winter, they kept the winter feel to this. We have the reappearance of the fox. There are quite a few foxes here. Again, I'm anxious to dig into the book to see if foxes do represent something that we're going to look at later. Six of Pentacles. Ooh, nice. Giving to the masses, giving to more than one person, right? Interest. So many good things uh, to let your intuition key with. Seven of Pentacles, doing the planting thing, very important. And we have the sprouting already. Eight of Pentacles, pretty traditional to have a grid with bees. You, you've seen this in a lot of decks, mine included. Um, you'll have a, a grid with bees in it. Uh, very, very popular as it goes. Nine of uh, Pentacles as well. Such an attractive freaking deck. Such an attractive deck. Ten, oh my God, the 10 too. That 10. A lot of these are really catching me off guard. Sorry. Just how vibrant and how pretty that is. I am going to color correct it so you'll see it in all of its glory. But in person, these colors, the soft pastel feel of it really just grabs you and hangs on and hangs on. It does not let you go. You're not, you're not escaping this. And I love the minimalist border. It doesn't get in the way. It's not half the card right? But it is minimal and it's nice and dark to let the colors of the inside shine and really bring it in. Do we got extra cards? <gasps> we do. We have extra cards. Nice, nice. All right. Astrological signs, they, they maintain the back. Let's look at this. We have astrological signs there. We have solar system associations. We have crystal associations. Ooh, see, we're looking at the book to answer these questions. We have extra cards. 
I like it. I like it. And we continue the crystal associations. And then we have the astrology and elements. And again, I asked if it was on the card. It's not, but you have an extra card for that. And then we have a couple of extra ones. Nice. We have clarity. Very, very pretty. We have obscurity, which, yeah, there is days where you just have obscurity. Okay, let's give this a shot. Uh, see if this is going to work or not. All right, see what it says. Select all. Uh, five cloud rotting game card. I don't think that's exactly, you know, I don't think that's exactly correct. Large goods. Th okay, well, never mind. You know, I tried. I, I did try. Anyway, let's look at the goodies. Let's look. This is why you're here. You're here to look at the. Oh my God, these are gorgeous. All right, let's put these back in here and um, let's look for the goodies. See what we got because this is the time for all of the extras. All, all of the extra. Okay, let's look at. Um, we got a sticker. Got the full sticker. We got a. Is this another sticker? Ooh, kind of cool. Have the. Um, I don't know what's going on there. All right. Uh, we have the, okay, hello, very excited to share with you the Meraki Tarot, nice, thanks and big hugs to you, big hugs to you too, thank you for sending all this, this is so awesome, let's take a look at some of the other goodies we got, um, I'm not sure how to open this, I am bad at opening things, I'm bad at directions and opening things, wow, that's pretty, that is mighty pretty, look at that, look at that pen, that's nice, that is really nice. I love how they have the, even the, like even the, um, the, where they put the pen, it has all of the cool stuff in there. And we got this other one pin too. Take a look at this beautiful specimen. Ooh, that's kind of cool too. There is pin number two. I love it. Very, very nice indeed. All right, what else we got in the bag? Got a bag, old goodies. Let's take a look. It's like Christmas up in here. It's like Christmas. Thank you. You're welcome. No, thank you. Thank you. Bouchette design. Very pretty. Very cute. I love a thank you note. We have a little book. Let's look at that. Ooh, 2021. Like a little calendar. It's got all of the graphics on it and whatnot. I love it. I love it indeed. Um, little calendar. Very, very pretty. All right. And what else we got? We got a, ooh, is that a sticker? Is that a sticker? Looks like a sticker. I think this is, oh, it is a sticker. So if you do, if you do journaling and whatnot, you look at all these, you get all the pretty pastel -y butterflies, the crystals, the little bees and everything is so nice. That is so nice, I love it. And then we have a bag. So you can put your tarot in a bag. Let's take a look at the inside of the bag. So like a little gray bag, you can put your stuff in. Very unique too. I love the edging, the sewing, the edging. That took a while. That took a long time. Very pretty. The Meraki Terra. Again, I love this. So pretty. So pretty. And let's look at the... Ooh, we got a cloth too. Let's take a look. Let's take a look, my friends. Let's take a look at this. Ooh, that is nice. That is nice. Look at that. Very minimal. It's very minimal, but it is so cool looking. In the middle, we got a nice place for cards. Just lay your cards out here and do your readings. I love it. I love it. That is a nice, it's a large cloth. It's nice and big. That's fantastic. And finally, we come to the end of the video. We got the book. The book has the same texture as the cards. Ooh, I love that. I love that. Just the consistency between the cards and the book, right? It's the same texture. It has that feel. And, and these are like raised, you know what I mean? Sort of like embossed within there. So it's not just a standard print too. So pretty embossed text and the same. Ooh, look at the inside of the book too. Oh, it's in color. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think I just had a stroke. I think I just had a stroke. Look at the beautiful font they used. Look at this. Look at the packaging. Look at how much care and love went into. Oh my God. All right. Oh, man, I, I'm I like out of breath at this. Okay, I got to calm down. All right. Illustrated by Carrie Bouchelle. Bouchette, sorry. And written by Carrie Bouchette. First edition, Meraki Tarot. My God. Carrie, the love and the passion that you put into this project is bananas. It is bananas. This is, this is one of those that just takes my breath away. 
it, it is so just so good just so good and then you open the book and it the the font is so easy to read look i guess that's like an aerial type of font i hate to I mean, I hate to obsess over a font, but a lot of times the font is like tiny. You can't read anything or a lot of, like the, the contrast is not good. This one's so good. This one's so nice. We have working with the Meraki tarot, a little bit hard to read on that, but eh. um, the rest of it looks good in the deck, the Meraki tarot. Ooh, nice. Um, layouts. We got a couple of layouts. We got a week's end, week's beginning. I like it. Then we got the three card read. And then we're moving into the majors, right? Um, where you can do the 22 major spread. And then look, it's got color. It's a color booklet, guys. And it has a little thing so we can see the majors and you can see the wands over here. So like an easy tab. Type. Oh my God. Anyway, the magician. Oh, that's so nice. And the book just opens up. It, it doesn't fight you. You don't have to fight the book to keep it open. It just opens up and it's there, right? You got the Empress. Oh, so pretty. So pretty. It's in color. It's in color. And you have Death. Again, so nice. So nice. And we have the Miners. We got a little bit of a Wands, Cups, and what have you. And then we go into the actual cards. Again, Jesus Christ with the presentation. Just so. Carrie, I, I don't know how long this took. I don't know how long this took to make. But my God. Knocked it out of the park. Knocked it out of the park. Okay. Um, yeah. The Meraki Tarot. If you don't have this, like, what are you doing? Um, like, why don't you have this? Uh, Four of Swords. And finally, we'll look at a couple more. The Five and Six of Pentacles. Damn, this is so nice. It's so nice. And then the end, we have the couple of, ooh, they have a couple of the extra cards. They do go over the meanings of the extra cards. And Gratitude. Wow, Bouchette Design, head over there now. You need to head over there now and take a look. Anyway, um, obviously from my reactions, you can tell what I think of it. Um, let me know what you think of the massive amount of love and care and passion that went into this deck and how, what you think of it and how you like it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you next time.